Hi, I'm Kit Colbert, CTO for End User Computing at VMware. VMware has built a comprehensive, integrated, end user computing portfolio bringing together desktop, mobile, content collaboration, and workspace services into a seamless, unified experience. I'd like to give you a brief overview of the technologies behind the products in each of these areas. Let's start with desktop. For most enterprises, desktop is still primarily a Windows world. Windows apps have reigned supreme in enterprises for decades, creating a dependency on IT to know how to manage and secure Windows. There are many strategies for managing Windows, but the big question is whether Windows desktops and apps should be run remotely or locally. Let's examine each option. Physical machines have always been hard to manage, and admins quickly realize that it can often be easier to centralize Windows desktops and apps on servers in the data center. Windows remoting makes patching, ensuring compliance and security, and other activities simpler and easier for many use cases. When thinking about remoting, there are a few different options. The first is called server-based computing, or application publishing. This was the original method of centralizing Windows application execution on a server, starting back in the 90s. You might know this as Microsoft Terminal Services, but it is now called Remote Desktop Services, or just RDS. RDS supports publishing both full desktops and individual applications, though publishing individual apps is by far the most popular option. The second option is Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, or VDI. With the advent of server virtualization, desktop admins started looking into running Windows desktops and VMs rather than on RDS hosts due to the better isolation properties of virtualization. In this model, a Windows client instance is run in a VM on vSphere and its UI remoted to an end user. The third and newest option is Desktop as a Service, or DAS. DAS is essentially VDI in the cloud, where a service provider runs the infrastructure instead of the customer, and all the customer needs to do is connect to their desktops or apps. Many customers prefer this because they don't have to buy hardware or operate the infrastructure and can pay a low per user monthly fee. Now, while remote execution is great for many use cases, users who need offline access or spotty network connections necessitate locally running Windows apps. Technologies here are also useful for managing the internals of remote Windows desktops and applications. ThinApp is an application containerization technology that runs a Windows app in a sandbox so that it's separated from the underlying Windows OS and other apps running on that OS. It's useful for simplifying application delivery by dealing with compatibility issues up front, and it also enables running apps on OSs they weren't designed for, such as running Windows XP apps on Windows 7. Layering is a type of containerization technology similar to ThinApp, but focused only on installation time containerization rather than both installation time and runtime containerization. This means layering is compatible with a greater set of applications compared to ThinApp. Like ThinApp, layering is useful for simplifying and streamlining application deployment. As you can see, there are many options for managing Windows, and our goal is to make it easy for customers to implement whatever option they choose. Now let's move on to mobile. The enterprise mobility management space is rapidly evolving and innovating to manage and secure the plethora of devices flooding into the workplace. There are three important technology areas for managing mobile devices and applications. The first is mobile device management, or MDM, and that was the original method for managing mobile devices. It was pioneered by BlackBerry, who set the standard for mobile security and compliance. The challenge today is expanding MDM to all mobile device types, including consumer devices like the iPhone and Android devices. MDM offers IT full device control, enabling them to manage what apps exist on the phone, what behavior is allowed, and execute actions such as remotely wiping the device of all its data. MDM is great for corporate-owned devices, such as those used by service technicians or in retail settings. Mobile Application Management, or MAM, was developed as a response to the full device control of MDM. With MAM, IT only controls a portion of the phone, specifically the corporate applications and their data. IT has visibility to and can wipe only corporate apps and data. MAM is useful for knowledge workers who bring their own devices or other situations where IT doesn't want or need to control the entire device. Mobile email management gives IT admins much greater control over email access policy than what Exchange ActiveSync allows. For instance, IT can restrict the times of day employees access email or from what locations they check mail. For example, restricting times of day is useful in preventing hourly employees from racking up overtime by checking email after hours. IT can also set tighter DLP policies on email and how it's used or shared. This enables IT to realize better email compliance and security.
Enterprise mobility management is an exciting space with technologies enabling IT to maintain control as devices flood into the workplace. Next is content collaboration. Content Collab focuses primarily on two technology areas. First, we have Mobile Content Management, or MCM, and that's all about connecting end users' devices to corporate information and data repositories. Typically, these repositories are data stores like SharePoint or SIF shares, but they can also include cloud solutions like Microsoft OneDrive, Google's G Drive, Box, and many others. MCM enables users to get access to all these repositories with just a couple of clicks without needing to open a VPN or to re-authenticate. Enterprise File Sync and Share, or EFSS, solutions enable a new paradigm for file management. Most all of them consist of a magic folder that is synchronized between a server and all of a user's devices. These solutions are enterprise-focused, allowing for much stronger control and security by IT. Users are increasingly flocking to these solutions since they make file management and content sharing so simple. I'm excited about the possibilities in this area as we find new, innovative ways to connect people and make collaboration safer, easier, and more productive. Finally, we have workspace services. Workspace services is our term for the common services that any workspace needs. There are three main technology areas in workspace services today. The first is identity. As services and systems become distributed both within an organization's data center as well as out in the cloud, it's critical that there be a common method for authenticating these services and enabling across the board single sign-on. This simplifies users' lives by allowing them to log in once and get single sign-on access to everything they need. This also simplifies IT's job by giving them a central point for managing access to all these services. A subsequent problem with distribution of services and systems is that as an end user, it's hard to know where to go to access what you need. Catalogs provide a single place for admins to register services and for end users to access those services. Leveraging common identity, users can log in once and get single sign-on access to all the services they're entitled to, all from one place. Finally, social is all about connecting people and enabling them to be more productive in their work. Social is a place users go to discuss and collaborate. But social is also about connecting to many services and systems where conversations can be embedded within those systems and data from those systems can be discussed without losing the context. In the end, social is about enabling end users to quickly and easily get the information they need to get their job done. As you have seen, VMware's end user computing portfolio covers a broad range of exciting technologies. I've only skimmed the surface here. I encourage you to check out the follow-up videos we produce, which will give you a deeper dive into each of these areas. Thank you.